So good morning guys, today we'll be looking at the uh, photoelectric effect uh, which is 7.2 in our textbooks. Today we're going to look at mainly Einstein's contributions uh, which is the photoelectric effect or the uh, photoelectric theory. So let's just talk about Einstein for a while. So Einstein uh, he was confused about the uh, classical theory of light, which was um, uh, Newtonian. Uh, that's what New Newton believed in. That's what Galileo believed in. And and Einstein was really uh, bamboozled because of uh, the way light behaves. He said, "Light is not what." the uh, classical theory says and he literally proved that light is small packets of energy which is called quanta or photons Einstein won his Nobel Prize because of his work on uh, the uh, photoelectric effect that we are going to take a look at today and so let's just uh, jump straight into it Okay, so this is uh, a setup, basically a setup. We have a glass jar with a gold leaf in it. You know this gold leaf which uh, deflects? We have that and we have a zinc plate. And this has to be a pure zinc plate. We don't want an alloy or something. And we also have a mercury lamp. So right now, as you can see, the gold leaf is uh, deflected, which means it's negatively charged. Or well, it could be positively charged, but in this situation, we have negatively charged the uh, uh, gold leaf, right? Which literally means we have given more electrons to it, which made it, you know, negative. So when we turn on this mercury lamp, the gold leaf deflects to the left, which means it goes to this side, uh, making it look in, like normal, right? It didn't deflect, which means it's losing electrons. The uh, negatively charged gold leaf is no longer negatively charged. So why does it go back to its original place? Like, why? That is because if we turn on this mercury lamp, it's gonna give off uh, its you know light rays, and the light rays are gonna hit the zinc plate. And what this does is the you know zinc plate has free electrons, free moving electrons. The free moving electrons will gain enough energy to escape from the metal itself the zinc plate itself so when the electrons uh, escape which means there are no longer electrons over here which means there are there are holes over here which can be replaced by other electrons and due to this gold leaf being negatively charged which which means it has more electrons um, on it or in it uh, the electrons over here will move through this wire thing and go to the zinc plate that is the reason why the gold leaf diverges back to its original place so here we can see that the zinc plate is losing electrons due to the mercury lamp or, or we, we can put it in other words like the mercury lamp when it's turned on the gold leaf diverges back to its original place but when it's turned off the gold leaf stays where it was. So that's it. That is for the electric effect. To put put it in words, we can say that the emission of electrons from the surface of a metal due to the incident light 
is called the uh, photoelectric effect. And during this process, during this uh, photoelectric effect process, these electrons that have uh, escaped from the uh, metal surface is called the uh, photoelectrons. Because uh, photons, I uh, will talk about it later. So these electrons that, has, uh, that have escaped are called the uh, photoelectrons. So now let's take a look at the uh, photocell circuit. So this right here is the uh, photocell circuit, uh, which is a more scientific, you know, setup compared to this. So this is the photocell circuit. This over here, right here, is the um, uh, cathode, and the cathode is actually covered with. Uh, cesium or coated with cesium and there is a monochromatic light coming from over here which will eventually hit the uh, cathode and you know the photoelectric effect will occur and there will be electrons you know what I mean so it will complete the circuit as you can see this the circuit isn't completed let me let me explain it to you guys so this is monochrome I'm sorry, chromatic light. Uh, so another thing is, this is a hollow uh, glass tube kind of thing. So inside here is where the cathode and anode is, and inside this uh, inside this uh, circuit, I'm sorry, the cell. I'm sorry, the cell. Uh, there is no air, which means there's vacuum inside uh, all the air molecules that were in here were sucked out so let me just write it down over here no air molecules you know why there's no air molecules it is to prevent um, the uh, photoelectrons that will be produced over here uh, we don't want them to hit the air molecules and you know slow down or, or, or lose their energy uh, that they uh, um, they have to prevent collision let's just like that so so right now at this moment uh, assuming there's no monochromatic light uh, the circuit is incomplete which or, or it's an open circuit there's no electricity flowing through it. As you can see, there's some uh, batteries down here. There's a potential divider over here. There's a galvanometer and, uh, and a voltage reader. But there's no electricity, you know what I mean? So when we shine monochromatic light on the, uh, on the uh, cathode, it's gonna produce um, some, you know what I mean, uh, four electrons. So there'll be f electrons uh, escaping from the uh, cathode and moving towards the anode as fast as possible. Um, not as fast as possible. Uh, it depends on the uh, energy, I mean the frequency of the uh, light. So we'll talk about it later. But over here there'll be electrons escaping from the cathode and reaching the anode. I'm sorry, this is the uh, anode. Uh, which completes the circuit I'm sorry it's not focus which completes the circuit which means there will be electricity flowing but which side the electricity will be flowing that's a good question actually we could look at here but let's not look at here for now look at the uh, flow of electrons there's electrons going from here to here which means it would go over here and go down over here and will come up uh, again this side which means electrons move over here what does that mean in a conventional current um, if the current moves this way the electron moves the opposite way so if the electrons move this way the current should move basically um, this way all right this is the current and I'm just going to put an E over here because it has a special name. Let's take a look at that. 
so the current produced by this cell or this circuit is called the photoelectric current or, or, or simply called the uh, photo current right and because of the potential divider we could draw a graph of uh, the uh, photoelectric current uh, versus the uh, voltage so this line over here this is called the uh, saturation current uh, saturation current and this is where all electrons are emitted so when we increase the voltage over here the electrons uh, that have escaped from the cathode they will reach the anode all the electrons will reach the anode and the uh, uh, the current the uh, photoelectric current will reach a maximum value of is why is let me tell you in a, in a bit so this is the uh, saturation current where all electrons are emitted okay this is where all electrons are emitted and let's talk about the vs what is vs so vs is let me go over here in the middle so vs is the uh, stopping potential which is v so what is stopping potential so it is basically the reverse voltage so if we want to uh, stop all these electrons we just put uh, vs we just put the uh, voltage to vs and all the you know the electrons will stop moving so so how do we uh, figure out the uh, potential stopping potential so all these electrons that are moving have a certain kinetic energy and you know what I say right energy lost is equal to energy gain so basically it is as we can see over here and potential energy is E times uh, V and kinetic energy is half mv square and in this case V is maximum and Vs is the uh, stopping potential and this E as we know is the uh, charge of the electron and this is the mass of the electron so yeah that's the uh, formula to figure out stopping potential or the uh, maximum speed